Uh, you were in the midst of the crisis with the Vioxx, an yeah. arthritic drug designed to be less harmful to the stomach, pain reliever better than aspirin, ibuprofen, but it had side effects heart attacks, strokes, and you and two others made the decision you had to yank the drug. And by the way, hopefully technology is coming along where in the future with a drug like that, you'll be able to determine individually. Exactly. It'll work for you, but not for me. Right. But in this case, if there are enough where it didn't work, you had to yank it. And of course, the trial bar just licked their chops like flies to a carcass and just descended. Uh, experts said it would take $50 billion to settle these cases. And you, uh, most companies have said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll find a way to do it, just settle them all. And you made the point, no. We're gonna fight every case, take them one by one, judge them by their merits, and not roll over. And you fought this. Tell us the moral reason you fought it, both in terms of the ethos of Merck and just simple justice, that if you are done a wrong, fine, but if you're just part of a sweep just to extract right. money, you weren't going to do it, which was very rare. It still yeah. is in companies today. So a couple of points I would make. First of all, you know, a lot of people look at the whole Vioxx situation as a legal strategy. If you were inside Merck, the fundamental allegation in that litigation, which was that this company knowingly and intentionally put patient health at risk, was something we sort could not Profits accept. before people see. Exactly. We, so this litigation, the defense of the litigation, was about vindicating the company's values. And so from our perspective, uh, knowing that we had brought this upon ourselves by voluntarily withdrawing the drug when we first saw what we thought was pretty good evidence that there was a disparity in terms of the number of heart attacks on the drug, we thought that was the right thing to do in withdrawing it. And then we said we're not going to let an, a group of, I use the word rapacious lawyers, take the company under uh, because we did the right thing in our estimation. Cultures, and, parasites, whatever <laughs> word you want to use, yes. So, so we decided that it was important for us to not let the word Vioxx become, in effect, a verbal shorthand for corporate greed and corporate wrongdoing. I'll pick one. We didn't want it to be the equivalent of Enron. We didn't want it to be that. And so we decided to fight the cases, and, and we tried something like 19 of them. And uh, we lost the first one pretty badly. But towards the end, I think we won something like eight of the last 10 cases because we could convince juries that the company was trying to do the right thing, that we were imperfect, that if you took a drug like that and put it in a large enough population for a long enough period of time, you were bound to learn some things about it that you didn't know in the clinical trials. And you know, frankly, I'm a big believer in the jury system, and the juries understood that there was no perfect system for developing drugs. And by and large, they sided with us, which is why the settlement number was a tenth of what people expected it to be. Yeah, for 4.85 billion instead of 50. It's really, it's just still real money, by the way. Yes, but <laughs> could, could have been more real right. money. Well, one of the things that uh, made you effective in, in the courtroom and this devising the strategy was, I think you said, I saw my father in that jury box. How would I convince him He's not, uh, in, in, he's not an expert in pharmaceuticals. How do I convince him right. the rightness of our case? Yeah. So I think that was, as I used to try cases for a living, and I always thought it was a real, real benefit for me that my father, who was born in the South in the year 1900, my grandfather, my paternal grandfather, was actually born into slavery. Uh, so I only have one generation between me and slavery. But my dad was born in 1900 in South Carolina. He had only three years of what passed for an education for a black child at the turn of the 20th century in South Carolina, but he was a brilliant man. And so I understood that there was a difference between the level of formal education that people have and their ability to understand issues if you talk to them in ways that they could understand. And frankly, that's what our democracy is about. Our democracy says the wisdom of large numbers of people is better than the wisdom of even very intelligent small groups of people. And that's what the jury system says. If we put 12 people in a room that come from disparate places in our society and we force them to wrestle with the evidence that they heard and come to a single version of the truth, that that single version of the truth is likely to be better than any expert's version of the truth. 